This is the world's smallest turbocharger. And this is my 1200cc drive bobber. I'm gonna fit this to this. Is it gonna work? Technically, it's not the world's smallest turbo. It's the world's smallest production turbo. I believe it was fitted on something like a Daihatsu three-cylinder or something like that. But it's designed for small engines, like 125ccs. People put them on go-karts and ATVs and mopeds. But will it work on my 1200cc bobber? Well, this bike is around 70 horsepower standard. And these apparently are good for 100 horsepower. At the moment, this is between 120 and 140 horsepower, depending on how I've got it tuned with the TTS and Rotrex supercharger on it. So I know the motor can produce the power with boost, but what sort of power am I gonna get with this turbo? And maybe if this guy works, have both of them. But that's another story for the future. I'm gonna be doing a full install series on this so make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you're notified when there's a new video coming out but for today we're going to see how feasible all of this is it's always been my intention with the channel to actually make content and show you what's involved the pitfalls and the ideas and the successes and the failures and i go into quite a lot of detail so that people can actually get inspired to do stuff mainly to just have a go before i supercharge the bike I researched turbocharging it because that was always on the cards. Once I've got my supercharger kit on there, I've got the intercooler and all the pipe work and everything I need to put a turbocharger on there. So I looked into compressor maps and researched turbos and what would work well on it. And I sort of come to the conclusion that most of the turbos were all really too big and laggy for it. Because it's only a low revving bike, it only low revs to like 7,000 RPM, and it's built for low end torque. The big turbochargers probably, it wasn't gonna benefit from them. So that's why I decided I needed one of these guys. It's a VZ21, or often called a RBH31 turbo. And it's the world's smallest production turbo. I paid about 260 bucks for this off of eBay. I like to show people how to do stuff without all the expensive tools or resources and how to do stuff without having to rely on other people to do it for them. So I'm going to be showing you how to make flanges for it without having to use a CNC machine or expensive tools or anything like that. However, I do want to develop this system so it's not just going to be a chucked together thing just to get views on YouTube. <laughs> what the heck? What is it, a transformer now? Because I'm all about sharing my knowledge and experience. I think it's good karma. So what sort of performance am I hoping to get out of it? Well, this is 70 horsepower, and this is good for 100 horsepower. So that's 170 horsepower. And with the supercharger on it, this, say, is 120 horsepower. And 70 horsepower, so that's nearly 200 horsepower. I think that's a bit ambitious, but we'll see what happens. If you think this video is entertaining or helpful or educational to somebody, then please feel free to share it. It should fit nicely around here somewhere, and I can actually clock the cold side and the hot side to point whatever direction I want. So this little guy here, this is the VZ21 Turbo. I believe that the compressor wheel and maybe the exhaust turbine wheel are about 35 mil, but we're not really going to get into technical things like that and do research like that. I'm more of a bolt it on and see what happens sort of guy. So there's an oil, that is your oil drain there. And your oil feed is over here, which is very important to lubricate the bearings as it's spinning really fast. And this one's also water cooled. So you've got a water inlet and outlet there to cool it. But 
on a motorbike like mine probably don't need that because it's out in the open air it's more for sort of enclosed spaces where it's going to get hot but that would actually be beneficial i am a little bit worried that i'm gonna <laughs> blow this turbocharger up because i'm not really convinced of the quality of it but having said that i can build the system with this make sure it works and then if it does work well then i can actually get a good quality turbo for it so it's got a internal wastegate there which is activated by this actuator from boost pressure there i may need to figure out some sort of way of adjusting that if i need to and i think that's 26 mil the turbine outlet and that's around the same size as well this is the only thing i'm a little bit worried about this might be a bit of a restriction for the bike so the first thing i really want to get into on the bike is actually making seeing where we can get our oil feed from and where the oil drain is going to go to i don't think it will be a problem this is my spare engine but that there that's for the oil pressure switch so at the very worst i can get a t-piece in there and bring the oil pressure off of the oil pressure switch drilling there might be some more galleries somewhere i can find and drill into to make it a little bit better than that but that's probably going to be okay so that is in that lot there so i'd need to get a pipe to the other side of the engine then i'd need an oil drain off of the turbo so the turbos need to be fairly high so the oil can drain back into the crankcase so maybe drill and tap something into something around here or the simplest way might even be just to have a pipe going into the oil cap or something like that i need to make exhaust flanges and actually have it so i can get my lambda probe in there as well i don't really want to cut these exhausts off because i am going to want to use these again i reckon so this is what i'm most concerned about about all this is the size of the exhaust ports on the motor compared with the turbine inlet of the turbo so this is my biggest worry about this whole thing is this is just going to be too much of a restriction for the engine I've had a think about it overnight and come to the conclusion this turbo is going to be too small so I'm not really sure what to do this is better suited to something like a single cylinder of 35 horsepower rather than a twin cylinder 1200 of 70 horsepower I don't want to waste my money so I might put it on a bug or something like that because I actually bought a spare one as well so I've spent a little bit of money I don't want it to go to waste so let me know what you reckon I should do in the comments and give this video a like as well keep me motivated to do this sort of stuff have a great day